The Outstanding Scientific Achievement Award is presented to someone whose research in diabetes has demonstrated particular independence of thought and originality. Dr. Steve Parker is a leader in his field and joins us now here in studio to discuss this well-deserved honor. It is a pleasure to have you with us today. Well, thanks, Autry, for the invitation. Thanks to you and to ADA TV and, and everyone. Absolutely. First off, congratulations. This is an incredible honor. Thank you. How does it feel to be awarded by your peers in this manner? Oh, it's just so humbling. There's so many talented folks doing diabetes research and it's such a diverse field and the, the specific niche area that I'm in for that to be recognized. I feel like it's not just me being recognized, but the entire subfield of epigenomics research and genetics. It's, it's really, really exciting. Well, let's dive into your research. You've uncovered several notable discoveries about diabetic genetic predisposition. Can you elaborate on some of those? And also, this is something you've been working on for about 15 years now? Yeah, it's been a while. It started back when I was a postdoc at NIH. Okay. Um, and now I've transitioned to a faculty member at the University of Michigan. So there's this really exciting idea that you do a, 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 a genome-wide association study, or GWAS, and you find all these genetic predispositions to the disease, but we don't really know how they function on a molecular level. And so what my group and many other groups across the world have been focused on is trying to understand those mechanisms of genetic predisposition. And it turns out the epigenome is a critical layer of um, molecular biology that propagates genetic predisposition on to all the cascades of events that eventually lead to the diabetes disease. And so we've been focusing in that area and making a number of discoveries there. And you know, you really are a leader in integrating genetic and genomic data into diabetes research. Where did this thought originate? Yeah, so that's not an original thought of mine. <laughs> I think back when the human genome was published uh, and completed in the early 2000s, that was always the goal, right? To try to use genetics and genomics and all these other new omic profiling technologies to better enable um, precision diagnosis and therapeutics for individuals with complex diseases like diabetes. So um, uh, I was just fortunate to be able to position myself in that space and work with the right people and we've made some pretty exciting discoveries in that area. What do you anticipate the study of genetics and genomics, the impact that might have on future diabetes research and treatment? Yeah, I think the, the exciting thing moving forward is there's now the latest paper came out in 2024 from uh, a consortium called T2DGGI, Global Genetics Initiative, and they've identified over a thousand independent genetic variants scattered throughout your genome uh, that predispose a disease. Um, and the idea is they each function a little bit differently. Maybe one controls muscle biology, another adipose biology, a lot of them involved in beta cell biology, but each individual is a little bit unique. So one person may have predisposition because of beta cell biology, another because of skeletal muscle biology, and the idea is in the future, we may be able to partition folks into these different categories to dissect heterogeneity of disease to enable more personalized and precision diagnosis and treatment. And precision medicine. Exactly, okay. yeah, yeah. You have a new research center. Yeah. What can you tell yeah. us about that center and the goal of your research? Yeah, so this is really exciting. It just uh, is uh, unfolding right now. And the name of the center is called the Epigenomic Metabolism Medicine Center. And it came to fruition because of the support of a number of people I'd like to mention. So at the University of Michigan, there are two departments that have contributed to this. Brian Athey is the chair of my department, Computational Medicine Bioinformatics. Uh, Tony Antonellis is the chair of Human Genetics, where I also have an appointment. And then two other institutes, the Taubman Institute, led by Chuck Barant, and the Caswell Diabetes Institute, led by Martin Myers. All those folks came together and said, we need to look more carefully at the epigenome because it's such a critical layer to understanding diabetes and they've contributed to launching this center and it will take place within the Caswell Diabetes Institute and um, uh, enable lots more epigenomic studies moving forward. And something you might be highlighting during your presentation later today? Yes, yes, later today <laughs> I'll be talking a lot about that. So thanks for bringing that up. Sure, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And again, congratulations on your honor. Thank you so much.